The United States is inching closer to defaulting on its debt, and Congress has made no progress on a way to avoid a debt ceiling crisis. Now, Republicans are blaming the president for the stalled negotiations. It's wrong for him to say that they're flirting with a the default. They're trying to cause a default because he's the one saying he won't accept any conditions, notwithstanding the fact that it conditions have for a long time been a norm that we've often resorted to. Not enough, in my opinion, but we have resorted to it. And if Joe Biden is unwilling to talk about those policies, then when the shutdown comes, it's on him. When moms and dads get laid off and when unemployment doubles and the stock market collapses, remember, Joe Biden sat on his hands while we urged and demanded action. If Joe Biden was your husband, he would, well, he would say, honey, I know we only make 4000 a month, but let's spend 7000 a month. You know that does not work. Every wife in America would shudder if that was her husband. But what we can do is prove to the American people that before we're going to have a conversation about mandatory spending, we're not going to be sending money to pro-prostitution LGBTQ groups in Colombia. Because that's what you're doing with your tax dollars right now. Needless to say, most of that's not true. President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy have only met once so far. It was last month. Biden wants Congress to raise the debt ceiling, but McCarthy says he'll only do that if there are spending cuts. But McCarthy has not said what budgets he wants to slash. Joining us now to help us with this, co-founder of Punchbowl News, Jake Sherman. He is an MSNBC political contributor. So we should underline that, that the Republicans in the House have not put out their own budget yet. Um, so, Jake, talk to us about where we are. I mean, we've always known that probably wouldn't be significant movement until the deadline, a few months off. But as with these bank failures and some real unease about the economy, this feels like the, the tensions are already really heightening. Tell us where we are. You could just ignore most of that because none of those people will be involved in any sort of effort to raise the debt ceiling. That's just noise, uh, complete noise and silliness. This is going to be, if it comes together, a deal between Kevin McCarthy and, and Joe Biden. They've met. I, it's a fair thing to say that Biden is going to wait for the budget to come out. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, but their time is running out and and Kevin McCarthy wants to talk. It's very clear to me at this point that there will be some sort of deal to raise the debt limit. Uh, it will include spending, uh, reverting spending to an er, to a lower level. I mean, th that will be a subject of negotiation between McCarthy and Biden. Um, and uh, but again, John, we need to remember here. Number one, we need to remember that UConn's playing tonight. UConn needs to win. And number mm -hmm. two, we need to remember that that this is going to be a June, July story. A and uh, the closer we get to June and July, the more markets are going to shutter and the more the noise is going to increase. But we don't have to at this point pay attention much to what uh, Lauren Boebert and, and uh, Rick Scott are saying about the debt limit. Yeah, I always have a policy of rooting for New England schools uh, in March, so I'm with you on that. Um, is, real quick, I'll follow up on this. Is there, we do know that McCarthy's hold on the speakership is pretty tenuous, and it doesn't take much to call for a vote uh, to try to oust him. Do we think he's risking that with this kind of rhetoric, or he's going to ignore them too? No, I think I think he understands that this is all part of the silly season. We we see this in, nego in negotiations and standoffs all the time, John. Um, listen, anyone can call for a vote for his ouster. He's given all of he's given the right everything they want. This, I mean, if it were up to him, he'd probably just do a clean debt limit. But he can't do that, obviously. And this is going to be, you know, we're seeing the posturing, and, and I, it's too early to say whether McCarthy's in any peril because of his stance here. So earlier this week, you spoke to Republican Conference Chair Elise Stefanik. I saw you there in your shirt sleeves. And uh, there we go. And you did she discussed what she called the weaponization of the federal government amid the Manhattan DA probe into Trump, which we've been talking about all morning. Give us a little more sense as to what she had to say. And is she representative of where most Republicans are? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> if most Republicans in the House, definitely not in the Senate. Uh, Ms. Stefanik is one of the president's or the former president's most um, uh, staunch allies and defenders um, but listen, it's amazing that they're launching this investigation before the indictment even comes out. It shows the the thirst for these investigations and, and quite honestly, the thirst to defend Trump, uh, no matter what the situation is. Stefanik is at, is at the tip of that spear. 
and um, it was warm in Orlando, so I decided to wear to wear short sleeves. John, I th- hope that's okay. <laughs> no, I wasn't. The, I wasn't questioning the decision. It was, oh, I know. It was, I know. It was smart. It was. It was a good look. Hey, look, <laughs> it's a, the whole tableau looks great. Uh, co-founder, and it also reflects the quality of interviews you guys are getting over there at Punchbowl News. So, congrats to you, Appreciate Jake Sherman. It, thank you for uh, being on with us this morning. We will talk to you again soon. Absolutely.